Ken, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Um, just a couple questions for you. By way of brief background, can you please tell our listeners about First Trust Advisors and your particular area of expertise? Sure, absolutely. First Trust Advisors is a firm that's been in business for about 20 years. Uh, we're out of Wheaton, Illinois. Uh, it, really the claim to fame First Trust Advisors has been in unit investment trust, but from that we've been able to expand into ETS. We're a major provider of ETFs to the U.S. market now, as well as some overseas markets. Uh, we have a small family of closed-end funds. We have a few mutual funds. Uh, so it's a firm that probably has assets under sur what we call surveillance with UITs as well as management, but probably somewhere around 75 to $80 billion. Great. That's wonderful. Um, with regard to closed-end funds, why should this resource be more fully integrated into an investor's portfolio? Well, obviously with the aging baby boom population, you have a lot of people looking for how they can produce income uh, in their golden years, how they can live off the income versus living off the principal of their investments. Closed-end funds, while they are income providers, they're not solely income providers, but given the market today, they're definitely... Uh, producing more income than most other vehicles in the market. So a lot of investors are starting to look towards these vehicles as a way to get that income that they can live off of. Obviously, we all know that CD rates and bank deposit rates are real low. Even individual bond rates are real low. But a lot of people don't know that closed-end funds, you can get yields anywhere in that 5 to 8% range, which is really head and shoulders above anything else in the market today. Right. And also, what type of investors is an ideal candidate for the portfolio integration you, pro you propose? No, it, it, it really all depends. You know, it, it, the advisor is going to know that best in terms of what their investor, what type of volatility their investor can put up with in, in the ongoing market. Closed-end funds can be very volatile, especially when markets turn. So okay. people need to understand that going in. Uh, they're perpetual in nature, so they're they're not like a bond where I give you a hundred bucks and I'm get a hundred bucks back plus <laughs> some income. Uh, so for an investor, it really all comes down to the how much volatility they want to put up with, what's how aggressive they want to be in terms of their portfolio. Sure, the advisor is going to know that best. I personally think that people should have some access to the closed-end fund space, and they should integrate it within their bond portfolio, within their equity portfolio, just around the corner, just around the edges if they're conservative, and be a little bit more aggressive uh, if they feel that they need more income and they have maybe a little bit higher net worth, and they're willing to put a little bit more money to work in the space. Great. Um, why don't you share with us your overview of the management philosophy or investment strategies of First Trust Advisors? Well, traditionally, as I, as I spoke earlier, First Trust is really founded on the UIT principle, which is a passively managed 40 act vehicle. Uh, our, our next biggest product is an ETF, which we all know the ETF market is a more of a passively managed investment vehicle. Right. So the investment philosophy has been more of, we're going to package what you want, and we're going to offer it to you in, a different, in any sort of different flavor. Uh, more recently, we've become a little bit more active in the space, uh, especially in closed-end funds. We now have an internally managed fund, closed-end fund, where most re most of our other funds are externally managed. We go out and find the best of the best to manage our products for us. Great. Managers who are active, managers who are in the space, managers that have a name on the street. Uh, so the philosophy is starting to change as we've grown bigger and we've been more successful. We're starting to move away a little bit from passive, only just passive. We're starting to get more into the active space. That sounds like a good move. Um, what is your forecast about the potential growth opportunities involving closed-end funds for 2015? You know, it, that's, a, that's a great question in the sense that we've had a rough year for the IPOs and closed-end funds this year. Right. And a lot of that's been predicated on the fact that the market's had a lot of volatility. Uh, the sponsors have continued to bring the same type of product almost month in and month out. And investors are starting to choke on it a little bit. Uh, so in terms of the IPO, what I'd like to see is I'd like to see everyone pull back a little bit. Let's let the dust settle. Let's let some of these funds get uh, matured a little bit. Let the people to understand the investment philosophy for those funds. Then we can move to the next level. If we take a break, it always helps the market when you take a break. And you don't offer anything new. It allows that secondary market to sort of catch up. Investors to get more involved with the space. And then you can come back, maybe reinvent the wheel a little. Maybe change the IPO. Maybe change the sector what you're offering. That's what I think we're going to need in 2015. I think it's going to be a lot of what we had this year. Very light issuance. But it, it has to change a little bit if we're going to be successful in 2015. Right. All right, and then the liquidity of closed-end funds is another factor for investors to consider. Um, why is this issue important? You know, when we were on the panel, we talked about that. And the one thing that wasn't brought up is what you just said. Closed-end funds are invested in. 
A lot of ETFs are traded. So it's a different mentality in a closed-end fund than it is in an ETF. The mentality is more of a buy and hold. It's more of an income vehicle of what we talked about earlier, the folks who invest in these things. It's less of a, I want access to this for 30 days and I'm gonna pop myself out of it, okay? Right. So while liquidity is getting better because you're seeing the repackaging of these, we talked about there's ETFs and closed-end funds now and there's closed-end funds and closed-end funds and open-end funds. <laughs> you're starting to get sort of that next generational thing going sure. on. Still, it's an investment. It's not a trading vehicle like we're seeing in the ETF space. And that's nothing, that's not a slam on ETFs. It's just a different vehicle and a different package. Exactly. Um, uh, also, what additional information would you like our listeners to know about First Trust Advisors? Well, you know, like I said, First Trust Advisors is, a, is an upcoming firm based out of the suburbs of Chicago. Uh, we do a lot of work in the UIT space, as well as we're one of the fastest growing firms in the ETF space. And as I mentioned, we're starting to get into the active management side, both on the ETFs as well as on the closed end space. So that's okay. where I'd be. That's great. Go Midwest. Go Midwest. <laughs> and then just one last question for you. Sure. Um, you know, with regards to the Pristine Advisors Conference, mm -hmm. um, what are your feelings on it, and uh, how do you think that it can benefit not only advisors um, but investors as well? You know, I think more of these conferences need to be done. If you go out and look at the conference schedule for ETFs, there's almost a, an ETF conference every month, and there's people flocking to these because that's the new hot dot in, right. in, in uh, securities industry. I think you need to sort of re-engineer that in the closed-end fund space. Closed-end funds have been around longer than mutual funds. They've been around <laughs> over 100 years. So, but what's happened, it's been sleepy. It's been sort of one-offish. You've got some big sponsors out there, and there's some sponsors who are trying to push it a little bit more. Uh, so I think that we need to be a little bit more aggressive in telling the story as right. an industry because obviously the ETF folks have been doing, been very aggressive and they've told a great story and look at the assets that they've raised. Exactly, I agree. Well, thank you so much for joining thank us today, you. Ken. Hopefully we will see you back here next year. Absolutely, thank <laughs> you. Right.